What's up guys, it's Lee here from Bleeped Up Productions and first off I want to thank you for all the support on this series already. This has been the most watched FIFA uh, content on my channel to date. So guys, thank you very much. If this is the first time you've stumbled across this episode, why don't you click the thumbnail on the screen to go watch episode 1. But anyway, moving on. Since the last episode I asked the board for some money and I hired some new scouts because scouts are a big deal in FIFA. 14 and I was sending them off to Italy and Spain to find some new talent because we want to build Coventry into a young and exciting team and moving into our first game we had Wigan Athletic and in the press conference I was going to motivate the boys again because we need to get a win here and it is game five against Wigan Athletic and it is in the Barclays Premier League so this is the fifth game of the season Wigan have an an interesting squad, should we say, because they got promoted with us, and um, we should win this game because, yeah, Wigan aren't exactly the most exciting squad in FIFA 14. No offense if you're a Wigan fan, I apologize, but here we go. We're going to get straight into the action here, and Frank Musa has just been on fire for us. If you haven't watched the first video, man, the guy cannot stop scoring. So, let's get straight into the action here, and we have a corner here. And Webster actually misses it, and Clark, <laughs> I don't know what happened there, but we just kept throwing um, ourselves at the balls, and Frank Musa again threw on goal, but couldn't shrug off the defender. So we'll pick up the action again, and Musa doing some fantastic leg work, and again the cross just falls short, but it comes straight to Eby, and his shot is blocked, and Eby gets it back. He passes it to Frank, and Frank... Still battling to get the ball, but Wigan's back line is strong and sturdy. So we'll pick up the action here, and we're going to actually get an opportunity here. And as you can see, it's nowhere near uh, the ball. Well, the, not the ball, the goal, sorry. And we have Frank Musa here doing a delightful ball to Gold. And Gold does a cheeky chip. And there it is, Eby with the diving header on the 45th minute. And we take the lead. What a signing on loan he has become for us. He is just, well, let's just say he's just becoming quite the player for us. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how he will develop throughout the rest of this season. So here we go. We'll take another look at that header. And we'll go in to halftime 1-0 up. Scoring right on 45 minutes is always annoying for another team. But it's very crucial for us to have that little bit of momentum. And as you can see, Wigan do some changes and I tell you now it doesn't really help. So we'll pick up the action here and Thomas here just abuse his well, he isn't really that quick, but he's a bit of a strong player, so he'll he'll take it down the line here and he'll cross it in and unfortunately that goes straight to the keeper. And we'll pick up the action again here and Frank Musa is going around everyone and he has a shot that is blocked. And Wigan just decided to just put a brick wall up. But we finally break the deadlock and Frank Musa is in and Frank Musa hits the bar and it comes right back to him. The keeper spills it but they get rid of it and and some of our players got tired so I bought on a few players and Marco Lopez was one of them. And we'll pick up the action here and Musa does a beautiful ball and Marco Lopez does this. What a goal. When you look at the replay it is unbelievable. He hits this with the outside of the boot. It is phenomenal. So here we go. Here comes the replay. A cheeky chip by Musa. And here it is. Look at that. Bang. Outside of the boot. Goes right into the side netting. For a 2-0 win against Wigan, guys. And I can tell you now, that felt good, scoring that good goal with Marco Lopez. But we have our first game in the Capital One Cup. And I can tell you now, guys, the Capital One Cup is something I want to try and win this year. And... We were against Hull. Hull are a decent side, I'm not going to lie. We're pretty, they're pretty average. Uh, in real life, they're surprisingly doing really well, which is really good for them. And uh, we'll pick up the action here. And unfortunately, they can't get rid of it. And Clark has an effort here, but it just goes wide of the post. And we need to take more opportunities like this, getting interceptions like this to get cheeky, cheeky goals. 
So we'll pick up the action here, and I don't know what Christie's doing here. We're trying. I was trying to get rid of it, and he actually passes it to their forward, but Fryat just hits it miles, miles wide. So I was very lucky there. But we'll pick up the action again, and Clark finds Gold, and Gold. Look at that. He's offside, but what a finish from that angle. That is quite unfortunate for the for the little man. And yeah, he is a mile off, as you can see. We'll pick up the action again, and Brady here in the corner just does all the defenders and gets a cross in. And they have an overhead kick. I think that was Corrin, but our keeper is equal to the chance. So here we go. The cross comes in again, and Corrin just does a nice... It's like a semi-half bicycle kick on the penalty spot. But we'll pick up the action again, and Fleck this time unleashes Musa. Musa chips it over to Leon Clark, and Leon Clark does exactly what he is paid to do. He finds the bottom corner and he starts playing the violin for Hull because he knows it could be the end and John Fleck there is kind of spazzing out and Leon Clark went through his torso with his hand but anyway here we go here's a replay of the goal right in the bottom corner which is a fantastic finish so we'll pick up the action again here and John Fleck actually just keeps on going and going and going and Frank Musa there it is look at that first time volley what a finish that is. The keeper should have really done better, but what a finish this is by Frank Musa. Look at that first time right under the keeper. The keeper should have done a little bit better, I believe. But look at this. We'll just pick it up like that. Bang. Look at that. What a finish. And here we go. We'll pick it up again. We're putting on pressure against Hull. And Musa again exploiting the defense. Has a shot, and it goes straight to the keeper. But the keeper does a fantastic save. And we just kept piling on the pressure, and in the 50, uh, 39th minute, sorry, Christie walks in and has an effort, but it, the keeper is same to it, and Barton has an effort, and the keeper saves it again. And then John Fleck picks it up, and Musa has an effort, and the keeper saves it uh, again. Unbelievable. The keeper was stopping everything, but Adams crosses it in, and guess who there to put it in the back of the net? Leon Clark. Oh, my goodness. What a... What a player. I'm not even going to lie. In real life, he actually wants to leave Coventry, which is kind of frustrating. But as you can see, Adams with a perfect cross, and Leon Clark just bullets that in with his head. And that is going to be half time, guys. And we go in 3 0 in our first Capital One Cup game. I'm excited because, yeah, we've scored some good goals, and a few of the older players who said they are going to retire at the end of the season are uh, performing really well. So we'll pick up the action here, and Adams has an effort cross and it goes to Leon Clark with with a good save by the keeper and there were some substitutions but not a lot happened in this game the damage was already done in the first half and it goes as a 3-0 win to us um, against Hull in the Capital One Cup so we'll go to game six and game six is in the Barclays Premier League and it's against Manchester City this is a huge huge game Oh, I tell you now, we are at home, but Man City have bought so many players in the past three years. It is unbelievable. I've lost how much talent they actually have in this squad. But one one player in... Yeah, they have Falcao. Look at that. They went and bought Falcao from Monaco. And on the bench, they have Ozil and like Nasri. So they're not playing a few of their best players, but they've still got a ton of talent. So we'll pick up the action here, and Musa has an effort and Joe Hart does a fantastic save there and then Gold here just crosses it in and Musa was beaten to the header which was nothing special but as you can see it is the 43rd minute and we haven't been able to break down Man City and here we go Barton passes it to Gold and Gold has an effort but it's blocked and it comes to him again but the defenders clear so Frank Musa is on the edge of the box now what can he do he's just gonna keep possession here and we need to somehow break it. Look how many players are back for Man City. And unfortunately, we go into halftime with a nil, nil. Which I'm happy with because Man City are a very good squad. But they were just super hard to break down. Their like, CDMs were unbelievable. And there it is. Jovetic comes on uh, for uh, John Gugetti. And as you can see here, uh, we decide to get a nice quick counter. And John Fleck is gone. He sees EB. And EB is going to abuse his pace. And Eby is one-on-one -on -one with a keeper. He hits it, but Hart does a fantastic save. And it's unbelievable. That was possibly one of our best chances to take the lead in this game. But Hart was equal to the effort. And look at this. Ozil now comes on. Man City are just rolling 
in the money. And Garclishi here is uh, going to do a cross. It goes straight to, um, I believe that was one of their players. I think it was Albu, but what a save that was. And Nasri is now on. And the referee calls that a foul, which I don't think it was. But from this free click, Clichy on the 84th minute finds Scott Sinclair. And Scott Sinclair puts it in the back of the net on the 85th minute. I was absolutely gutted, but Man City were all over me in the second half. They started bringing on their world-class players, and it really started to hurt us. And as you can see, Sinclair with a fantastic finish there with a finesse finish. And Jovetic here, who just came on in the second half, is dispossessed, but company uh, get, kicks it out to Ozil. And look at what Ozil does here. Ozil just keeps going and going and finds Sinclair, and he just keeps going, look. And Jovetic picks it up. Passes it to Ozil, and look at that. It's an own goal. Christie scores an own goal on the 90th minute. I felt really unfortunate to score an own goal, but Ozil does a phenomenal ball. If he wasn't there, Falcao was going to smash it in. But unfortunately, he kicks it into the back of the net. And that's our first loss of the season, guys. We lose to Man City in the Premier League, and that's our first loss and you know what the newspapers had a lot to say about it it says in the in the early season game man city were the two nil victors over country city in their league clash the game was a great spectacle and the fans of man city stayed until uh, after the final whistle uh, to give their team a standing ovation which you know it was a really good win for them but it's coventry city period so we'll move on into our next game, and we are against Fulham. So with that loss, guys, I had to motivate the boys. But as you can see, uh, the papers picked up on what I said in the press conference, and it says McAlpin has called on his side to remember consistency is the key to progress ahead of the upcoming game with Fulham. And we'll quote, We need to ensure that we are consistent every time we take the field, the Coventry boss explained at a press conference this week. It is no good beating the top sides one week and then drawing or losing against lower opposition the very next week. Fulham will be a tough match, but they are a chance for us to, to demonstrate that we understand the need for consistency. So quite a good talk by me, if you don't say so myself. And it is game seven, uh, guys, here in this episode, and it is in the Premier League, and we're against Fulham, and we're at home, so we need to get a win. It was really hard. No, actually, we're away, sorry. And it was really hard taking that 2-0 loss against Man City, but Fulham we should beat. They're a good squad on paper, but in real life, they are truly underperforming a little bit, I think. So here we go. We have the handshake. They've got Stockdale in goal, so we should take full advantage of that. But they do have Ruiz out which worries me a little bit. But we'll pick up the action here, and Barton uh, passes it out wide to Christie. And Christie is just going to use a little bit of his strength to go grind, and EB crosses it, and it doesn't go anywhere, but he crosses it again. And Frank Musa, what a finish that is. And he is sending an arrow into the crowd. On the fourth minute, we take a 1-0 lead, but what a finish by Frank Musa. EB never gave up on crossing the ball. And look at that acrobatics on the penalty spot almost. And bang, look at that. Bounces over Stockdale and into the back of the net. Every time I see this goal, it just gets better and better. So let's just watch it one more time. Frank Musa is our top goal scorer, and that goal proves that he is just becoming quite a scary, scary player for us. So on the 10th minute here, we'll pick it up, and EB passes it to Musa, and he'll return the pass to EB. And EB will just keep driving and driving and have a shot, but Stockdale is equal to that effort. And we'll pick up the action here, and Ruiz actually passes it to Botang. And Botang actually does a fantastic through ball here. And you want to know something? Our defense has improved so much over the three seasons, and we take it out of danger. But unfortunately, we get caught on the counter a little bit here. But our defense, again, is just phenomenal. And we'll keep up the action. And John Fleck does a fantastic through ball to Musa, And he'll cut in, have a shot, and Stockdale tips it over. And if you look at the replay here, what a touch by Musa. Cuts inside, has a full-on effort, and that is going into the top corner. But Stockdale does a fantastic save. So we'll pick up the action again here, and Fulham 
uh, actually break our lines here a little bit. But again, our defense is just beasting and feasting at the moment. And Webster clears the ball there. And it is a 1 nothing lead. We go into half time with a 1 nothing lead, which I'm really happy about because we should be beating Fulham. But we'll pick up the action here on the 49th minute. And Barton, using a little bit of skill, crosses it in. And Frank Musa there heads the ball straight at Stockdale. He should have had his second goal of the game. But we'll pick it up still. John Fleck has the ball and he is going to just lose possession, unfortunately, there. And we're basically a few minutes later, John Fleck here sees Gold on the wing and Gold hits it, but unfortunately takes a deflection. So it goes out for a corner. So uh, Fleck brings it in. It comes to Marcos again. What a finish. I tell you, Lopez in this last couple of games has scored and an unbelievable goal with his outside of the boot and now he has an effort outside the box with his left and it goes flying past Stockdale I don't even think he saw it because there were so many defenders in but what a goal by Marcus Lopez anyway moving on we'll pick up the action here and some great one-two football and Frank Musa chips in EB he's offside but what a finish that is off the post he's miles offside <clears throat> Excuse me. And what a finish that was going in off the post. But we'll pick up the action here. And Fulham actually have a free kick. And you know what? Clark comes out of nowhere and sets Frank Musa free. And as you can see, he cuts inside. And he has an effort. And Stockdale again pulls off a fantastic save. Frank Musa should have really possibly had four goals in here, but it shows that he is hungry, and if we if he gets an injury, it will be quite worrying for our team. But from the following corner, guys, we have an effort here, which is cleared, but it comes out to Marcos again, and unfortunately he gets dispossessed, but Webster keeps it going. Fleck does it to EB. EB turns, has an effort, and it just goes wide, unfortunately. It almost trickled in, and I can tell you now, this has been a pretty solid showing um, after our loss to Man City. But here we go, we have um, Ruiz here going through everybody, and then look at this. Words can't describe how bad that miss is, just watch the replay. He has an open net, our keeper is miles out, and he blasts it into uh, the away stand. And Stockdale here does a clearance which goes straight to Fulham. But look at this. We pick it straight back up, and Musa passes it. Musa goes through, and boom. There he is again. Seven goals in the league so far, and that is unbelievable. Frank Musa just cannot stop scoring. He is just beasting and feasting on teams. And we'll pick up the action here on the 86th minute, and EB puts Musa through again. And Musa, this time, unselfishly, Passes it, but EB has an effort, and it's hit straight at the keeper, which is unfortunate. But here we go, Fulham on the 90th minute. Boateng, using a little bit of skill, passes it out wide. They're doing all the heavy work. The heavy work, I mean, they're doing all the hard work even. But the cross goes miles wide, and that is full time, and we win 3 nothing against Fulham. So, as you can see, guys, on the screen right now, it's talking about EB, and it says, at the beginning of the season, few expected Jordan EB to shine like he does right now. It is now up to McAlpin to motivate and allow the player to perform at this level as long as possible. While hopefully we can sign him. That's what I'm praying for. In January, we can sign EB, or maybe at the end of this season. And as you can see, look at that, trop door performances by Musa. Top players put in top performances, and that's exactly what Frank Musa has been doing lately. Uh, he's been turning it on game after game and really proved to be one of the standout players at Coventry City. I completely agree. The guy is a beast, and yeah, if he gets injured, I'm really, really worried. So, taking a look at the Premier League right now, we are top of the table at 18 points, followed by Manchester United, Newcastle United, Aston Villa, Man City, Fulham, Stoke, Spurs, Liverpool, Chelsea, Everton and Arsenal. Look how low they are. Uh, West Ham, Sunderland, Wigan, West Brom, Norwich, Southampton, Hull and Swansea City are still at the bottom of the league without a win. They've played seven games and got nothing. That is brutal. And as you can see, guys, here are the player stats. Frank Musa is top of the league with goals uh, with seven. 
followed by Van Persie, uh, Falcao, uh, Janovic, um, Jarvis, uh, Sessignon. Uh, that's the top six. So, you know, Frank Moose is up there with some really world-class players. And if you look at the assists, there he is, Ryan Gold, our standout youngster. I kid you not, with four. And then it's followed by Sissoko, Clichy, Young, and Jarvis and Falcao. Man, this is unbelievable. I can't believe that we're doing this well it's so early on in the season. But like I say, it is early on in the season. And here we go, the clean sheets. Number one is De Gea. Then it's Carson. And then it's, I can't even pronounce that name for Aston Villa. And then it's uh, Ekrami. That's our uh, Egyptian goalkeeper with three. And then Kuzak with, uh, for West Ham. And as you can see on the screen right now, guys... Thank you for watching this content. If this is the first time you've ever seen any of my FIFA content, please leave a like and a comment below. And you know what? It does. Uh, I do appreciate it. You know, all the uh, the likes that I've got and how many views it's got. It's fantastic. And if it is the first time that you've uh, seen uh, my content and you've enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button there. And if you want to view any of my other content, click uh, the view uh, channel here. And look, at the end of every episode now, I'm going to have uh, a chance to go back, uh, give you guys the opportunity to go back and watch the last episode. And if you're watching this right now and the next episode is out, you can click that thumbnail right away. You can check us out on Facebook and Twitter uh, for all the usual things about when videos are coming out and stuff. But until next time, guys, take care, have a good one, because, yeah, Coventry, we're beasting and feasting our way to a Barclays Premier League title, hopefully. Hopefully.